Hello, my name is Matt, and welcome to the Redstone behind the scenes for Ghostbusters. Um, I've been meaning to do this video for a while, but um, when I was looking through the Redstone and deciding how I'd go about explaining it, I thought um, when I did the Redstone for this map, it was it's really, really badly structured. Like you can see here, it's just going everywhere and around here. It just snakes around everywhere, and it's just it's pretty hard to follow. So I didn't. I thought showing this would be pretty bad. Um, and I've actually restructured the redstone. I've not put this isn't all for download, the new version, but you know, because it, it does exactly the same, so it's not much point. But I've rearranged it and it, it's, a, it's a lot neater, so it'll be a lot easier to follow. And also, as well, doing it this way, I found that there's actually quite a lot of pointless redstone that didn't actually need to be in the actual downloadable version. For example, for this bit of redstone, there was about three pieces of extra redstone coming back to the main building, but it turns out I didn't need those at all. I can just use scoreboards. And the scoreboards were actually already in the game and already did that. So, you know, it's pretty pointless. But basically, we'll just go through this. It's exactly the same. It's just I've restructured the redstone, so it's a bit neater. So we'll go into it about here. So it begins, of course, with these two pressure plates that the two players stand on. Um, for anyone who knows a bit of redstone, you might be able to guess that that is an AND gate. When you stand on the pressure plates, which are on these two blocks here, it powers this um, dot of redstone, which powers the piston to lock them in. And also, when they're both pressed, both of these torches will turn off. And when they're both off, this will turn on. So this torch will only turn on when two players have stood on both of those pressure plates. So that's an AND gate. And then it feeds into this, which is a mono stable. So, of course, they're going to both be stood on that for a few seconds. So the pulse of redstone will be really long. This just turns into one tick of redstone. So it just this torch just turns on and off. And then that will just power everything else. So we've got a first load of command blo blocks. Blokes? first lot of command blocks and basically all these are just setting up the game with game rules and stuff so this one says of course welcome to ghostbusters um, this sets everyone's game mode to adventure mode so say if someone was in creative flying around they don't have to change back the game will just do that for them and then i think these are the game rules i oh, know oh yeah here we go basically um on some servers i'm not sure if the bucket or vanilla or it's probably not vanilla but basically there's some plugins that when we were testing this map when you die um, you're supposed to lose potion effects, but when we were testing it, um, for some reason, we didn't get potion effects cleared. So when we got killed, we all spawned back here, and we all had potion effects. So all these command blocks do is these just remove all the effects that are actually in the map. Um, just It gives you a duration of zero seconds, so it'll give you the potion effect anyway. That lasts for zero seconds, so in effect that just removes it. Um, one is a speed boost. Um, I've got, got them all written down here, actually. Um, two, which is the next one, was slowness. Of course, the tanks get slowness. Um, eight is um, jump boost, so that's the jumper. And then the last one is ten, which is regeneration, which is what tanks and jumpers both have to regen their health. So that just wipes everyone's effects. They're play pointless for the most part, because when you die, you should lose them. But they're there just, just in case. Um, this is a scoreboard command. Um, it adds a new objective called in-game, and it's a dummy. So just forget about that for now. I'll explain what the in-game objective does. We just note that that's there and it creates it. Here we have the game rules. So mob spawning false. The zombies that spawn in the actual map are done by a custom spawner, which I'll show later on if I remember. It's not really a big deal, but I've got a spawner for those, so there's no normal mob spawnings. Um, command block output false. Of course, you don't see all these commands spam your screen. Keep inventory true, so when you die, you keep your inventory, of course. Do daylight cycle false. Now, this is a new one. This is in 1.6. Um, basically, it'll just freeze the sun in place. And, of course, I've frozen it there, so it's like a nice dusk time for the actual map. And then time set 22,000. So I've frozen the night cycle, and I've set it to that time, so it's just about to go night as well. Um, difficulty. Oh, and then this bit here is difficulty 0, difficulty 1. So if you want to play again... Basically, this will just switch everyone to peaceful and back to easy, so it'll just kill all the mobs on the map. So that's what that bit does. Um, then the next bit here is both of these will trigger at the same time, because of course that powers this block, which powers that. Um, this adds a team to the scoreboards. I've badly named it Undeads. I put an S on the end of it by accident, um, but I've, I've just carried that through through all the commands. So it's, the team is called Undeads, and its display name is Undead with a capital U. So if it's used in anything, it'll be seen as with a capital U. And then the one below it, it adds cops. Now, it'd be better if I called it Ghostbusters, 
but back then we weren't really thinking of Ghostbusters. It was built with a different idea in mind, uh, but it just ended up becoming Ghostbusters. But we called the actual variable, the team name, Cops, and it's called Cops in-game, although you don't ever see these names. So I don't even have to specify them, but they're there anyway. So that creates two teams. This um, is a team option. So the undead team, it disables friendly fire. So basically the undead, undead people can't hurt each other. And same with the cops, just the two cops can't hurt each other either. And then these set the colours. So team option, undead, the colour for undead is light purple. That's why their names are light purple. And then the same with cops, except their colour is aqua, so they have a pale blue. So what these have done is it's set up the game rules. It's cleared everyone's effects and stuff. Um, it's set it to easy. And it's set up the teams for people to join. Um, so that's just, they're the initial conditions pretty much. Now here... Um, is right we'll ignore this for now we'll come back to this later on but just know that when the game starts a bit of redstone goes into that um, after that it also goes this way but you can see there's two different ways to basically go the same way what this basically does is it, i added this in in the second version of the map pretty much uh, when people suggested that basically at the start of the game when you get the initial sort of like role play saying like oh a large group of undead have been detected you have like six minutes to track them all down and stuff all these um it's quite time consuming and if you're playing multiple rounds you don't really need to hear it again so when you play the first game a bit of redstone comes through it can't go this way because there's no block or no piece of redstone there so that'll just stop there this way it'll go through the block this this repeat will power the block It'll power this redstone, it'll go through all the role play, say all of that, and then go on to the rest of the redstone. But it also comes down here as well, comes along here. This here is an RS null latch. So this will come in, power this block, turn that torch off, letting this torch turn on, then this will flip states. And what that'll do is this block will go down and this block will come up. So the next time when you press the button, or start the game even, this block won't be here, so the redstone won't be able to get through this time. So it won't it won't do any of this. Instead, it'll come through here. It'll come through this block, which has now popped up like that. And it'll just skip all that, and it'll just carry on like normal. And every other round after the first round will just take that route. So it'll skip out about, about three or four seconds of roleplay there. So that's all this does. It just makes it so that the first time you play the game, it goes that way. And then every other time after that, it goes this way. And then after that... Um, it goes, well, it just goes in a line here. So it's 5, 4, 3, 2, and then 1. And then I've timed these repeaters so that this is a second as well. So in the last second, of course, these are all timed, these are all uh, measured to be 1 second. After 1, it takes 1 second to get to the beginning of the game. But as you can see, it has quite a lot of commands to go through. So we'll go through all those now. So this is scoreboard teams join undeads and then everyone within an xyz so this xyz coordinate is the middle of the water pool that they all jump into and then a radius of five which is the radius of that circle so anyone inside that um, pool of water joins the undead team and then over here we've got two here um spawn point at all every um, team equal undeads and then xyz that XYZ there will be the cell that you spawn in if you get killed as an undead. Um, and this sets everyone's spawn point who's on the undead team. So anyone who's an undead, their spawn point will be set to that place. And then this one will teleport everyone who's on the undead team to the spawn point, which is where you choose your one of three classes. So that's what that does. The good thing about having them all on a team is that if I want to teleport everyone around who's an undead, I don't have to specify an area and hope that they're all there, like I did in the old Predator map. Um, I can just I can just specify team equal undead. They're all in that team. They'll all move around, which makes it very easy to teleport undead players around. And same with cops as well. These two here, scoreboard teams join cops, and then an X Y Z corner with a radius of two. And then there's another one here. And what these basically are, they're the two pressure plates. So of course. I have to specify just two areas in case there are people who don't want to play and are just running around. They can't. If they were near the pressure plates, they'd also get put into the game and would get buggy if there was just one central circle here. So there's two circles specified there and there to put both of those cops players on the cops team. So we scoreboard teams join cops and then the closest person and then the closest person. So that's how they get put onto the cops team. And then over here, there's three commands. This one here spawn point 
So it sets the top cop spawn point to the kill box in the top of the skyscraper. So everyone on the cops team, they're all there. Now this teleports them um, both to separate places. So I couldn't use the I couldn't use team equal cops for this um, because when they spawn, they spawn in two sides of an armory. If you if you've played the map or seen it, um, so this teleports person on pressure plate one to the one side, and then the person on pressure plate two to the other side. So that's what those two do, and they go into there. That's the armory. We'll come back to that. Um, so after that, after that, it comes over to the next bit. So this adds a load of objectives now. So scoreboard objectives add souls. Its type is total kill count. Um, total kill count goes up whenever you get a kill on either a player or a mob. So zombies or other players. And it's called souls. That's the one that pops up at the side. That's its display name. And that's, we'll leave that for now. Um, oh yeah, this here then. Scoreboard objectives set display sidebar souls. This puts the souls objective on the side of the screen. That's how it does it. Um, the next objective, I think, is... Oh, yeah, here we go. Scoreboard objectives add time. It's a dummy, and then time with a capital T. I, again, I didn't need to specify that. And then this, um, set display... Oh, no, that'll be that one. Yeah, there we go. Scoreboard objectives set display list time. Now, list is whenever you, is when you press tab. I'm on single player, so I can't do it at the moment. Although, if I was to run this command, I could. But it's basically the yellow number you see next to your name when you press tab. And that's just so people can see how much time there is. And then this top one sets everyone's time score to 390. So scoreboard object, scoreboard players, sorry, set at A is everyone, objective time, score 390, which is six and a half minutes. No, yeah, six and a half minutes. Yeah, I just had to check that. Um, it sets everyone's time score to 390, which will be six and a half minutes, but I'll show you how that is the case later on, or in a second even. And then here... This just tells everyone that you have 30 seconds to leave the room, otherwise you'll be teleported out. That's why it's 690 seconds and not 600 and 60. Yeah, which is 6 minutes. There we go. Getting confused. <laughs> then after that, it comes into here. Now, on this side, it's an RS null latch. So, remember, from the mono stable, it's just one tick of redstone. So, this would just come in, but it activates this um, RS null latch. So, this stays on then on this side. Then it goes through this piston. Now you can see there's two command, there's two repeaters. This has one extra tick. This one, sorry. So the redstone gets through here, but then this then powers the piston. So only one tick gets through it. So one tick comes in, it becomes like turned on forever, and then this puts it back into being a tick again, just so that this stays on, so this piston stays extended, because this piston needs to extend because this is a clock here. Then this is one. This is a one second clock here. Um, so when this comes forward, the redstone will come around here, it'll come back through the repeaters, back into this block, which is now here, there, and then we'll power that part, bit of redstone, and it'll go around in cycles, and it'll tick through every second. Now, over here, then, are loads and loads of command blocks that get, which are, which are conditions, which is testing for every single second. But we'll go through every single one of them, and you'll see that it's not as bad as it actually sounds. So these three command blocks here, the first one is it removes um, one point of, from, of time from everyone who's, the t who's on the COPS team. Now, I'll, I'll tell you why it's COPS in a second and why it's not everyone. It originally was everyone until I changed it because it makes the map look nicer. And so basically what this does is everyone starts at 390. Um, it should only be everyone on the COPS team. To be honest, I could change that. I just didn't get around to it. Um, so what it'll do is every second it'll go 390, 389, 388. So those that score then will be seconds. So every second it ticks down one, and that's how the timer works. Um, the second one is it clears everyone's inventory. Um, oh, where is that? Oh yeah, that is the um, the cops kill box. Basically, um, if a cop still has ender pearls and they are killed, they can ender pearl through the glass and get back into the game. This just clears their inventory so they can't do that. So X, Y, Z corner and then a range of six just to make sure it fills the room. And then the final one here is scoreboard plays reset at all team equal undead. So everyone on the undead's team, their scores get reset. Which means that now they'll, their original time objective would have been 390. But this reset command will reset that back to zero. And every second the undead's team will get reset all their scores on every single objective. The reason this is in 
is because the souls tab on the side, if an undead person kills a zombie, their name will show up on the side. For a brief second, until this command hits, it will reset their score and take them off that. So this was to handle the souls effect so that they don't appear on the side. As a side effect, that also affects their time objective. So to fix that, um, the time is now tracked only on the cops and not on everyone, which is actually better because if someone was to disconnect and reconnect, their score would be out of sync. And if it's a cop, chances are if that's going to happen, the undead are going to win anyway. So that's not really a problem. So that's what all they do, and that is why the time is only on cops and not undead. Um, so we'll, we'll look at all these now, because these are all pretty similar, and we'll you can go through all of these. Um, this one here is testing for the closest person. It just doesn't really matter. It's just anyone on the map um, with a score of a, a score on time minimum 360, maximum. You know, it doesn't say max. It's just, but that is maximum of 360. Um, th so this will trigger when anyone on the map has a score of exactly 360. So when a cop is in, well, it's infinite range, but when a cop goes down to 360 on their time score, this one will um, succeed this test for command. It'll say, oh, there is someone with this score. This comparator will output and it'll power these two command blocks. This one will say six minutes remaining because there's six minutes left. And also it'll teleport everyone in the undead room out into the um back into the map uh, i don't make it it doesn't teleport cops because if the cops don't teleport out they're going to lose whereas if the undead don't teleport out they win so i have to prevent that win because that's a stupid win a stupid loss doesn't really matter if the under if the cops choose to lose by staying in their cell well, they deserve to lose simple as that so yeah we'll move on this one is exactly the same, except it's testing for a score of 300 instead. So, 5 minutes. And then that'll say 5 minutes remaining. Believe it or not, this one is 240, so for three, 4 minutes remaining, whoops. 180, 3 minutes remaining. 120, 2 minutes remaining. 60, 1 minute remaining. 30, 30 seconds remaining. 10, 10 seconds remaining. So those are just the announcers to say how long's left, just to remind people. So they're, they're fairly simple. Um, we'll come back to this in a second. This next bit um, is testing for a, per, the closest person with a team who's on the cops team with a score of souls of ten, score sold so a score sold min of ten as well. So when someone on the cops team has a score of ten in the souls objective, remember that's the total kill count. That's for killing players and zombies. So when they get ten kills, pretty much this will succeed. It'll power this pist piston, it'll power this command block that adds um, everyone. It adds 60 points to the time objective for everyone on the cops team. So what basically that does is that, that adds one minute of game time, pretty much, um, for getting 10 kills. And then after that, it'll say a cop has captured 10 lost souls, time has been added. And then here, um, that cl the person who has the score of 10, it sets their souls to what? one even though it should be zero so i'm going to change that now but it's, it's no big deal in the map um so scoreboard player set um the closest person who's on the cops team with 10 kills in well yeah 10 kills it sets their souls to zero the problem with this is that if one if both if someone's on 10 kills and someone's on nine kills and then of course this will succeed because someone's on 10 kills and then in the space of 0 0.3 seconds because that's the delay on this that other person gets a kill. This will wipe. Um, in fact, no, it won't. Never mind. Ignore that. I was going to say it would wipe both of them, but it's only the closest person. If that was at A, that would be a problem. But instead, then this wouldn't unpower because someone's on 10 kills. The way it would unpower is if someone was on. Yeah, 0 0.3 seconds. If someone gets up to 10 kills, that would break because then this wouldn't turn off in the next tick and it would stay on forever and you'd never be able to get more kills. That is a bug. Um, but the chance of it happening is so minimal. I mean, you know, 0 0.3 seconds. You have to get a kill within 0 0.3 seconds of someone else. So you'd have to literally find two zombies next to each other if you're working together. So that's never happened. So I doubt it will happen. If it does happen, if you can't, if you get 10 kills and then there's no like counter to say, oh, you've got 10 kills, you, that's the problem. But that's it's so minimal. It's, it's such a small time frame. I won't, I won't worry about it. So now coming to here, 
this is how the game actually ends. So this tells you how long you've got left. This um, does the souls. This how you, that's how you get more game time. Um, that is the clock to count down how long, how much time is actually left. The game actually ends using these command blocks. So this one here um, is testing for a score of zero. So at zero seconds left, these are all doing um, number like such as five minutes, four minutes, three. This is doing zero. So when the when the cop has a score of zero, it'll say time is up because this will output time is up, and then it'll say the undead have made it back to the living world. So this is um, an undead winning cop um, Ghostbusters losing ending, and then it just goes into a set amount of command box and ends the game. But there's two other ways of the game actually ending. This one is testing for. This is the these corners are the kill box for the Ghostbusters, so the top of the skyscraper, range of eight to make sure it's getting everyone in. Team cops. This will output however many people, because it's at all, however many people are in the kill box. So if there's no cops there, this won't turn on. I need to stop calling them cops, but you, you know it, it's easier. The Ghostbusters. If there are no Ghostbusters killed, this won't output. If one Ghostbuster is killed, this will output a signal strength of one. So it will come up to here and then stop and not power the repeater. However, when the second Ghostbuster is killed, it outputs a power of two. So it powers both of these pieces of redstone, hits the repeater, and then it says the undead cannot be stopped because all Ghostbusters have been eliminated. So that's another undead winning outcome. So there's two ways for the undead to win. The way the cops win is a little bit more complicated here, but we'll get through this. But it uses the principal reason the comparator was made of comparing two inputs which is great because i wondered about how i'd do this for ages and then as it turns out this is exactly what comparators were made for which was amazing and i was pretty happy so this is comparing two inputs um, and the these get updated every single time the thing comes along so it's testing both inputs the first input is testing for everyone on the undead's team so this will output a signal um, strength of how many players there are of course, this will break if there's more than 15 undead, so if you're playing with more than 17 people. But of course, if you're playing with more than 17 people, the undead will win every time because they'll just, they'll just absolutely destroy the cops. So, you know, it's not made for that many people, so I'm not worried about it here. So this is testing for everyone on the undead team. So say if there's six people playing, that means there'll be four undead. This will be a signal strength of four. Now, the way the comparator works is if the side input is stronger than the forward input, this will be off. It will output nothing. It will output only when this input is stronger than or the same as this input, I believe. But it better do because this is how this works. This one here is testing for everyone in the undead team who's in the kill box, as in the jail. And this is testing for everyone in the jail. So if there's no one who, if there are no undead who have been caught, this will um, output nothing. So this will be turned off, so of course no output. If one undead dies, this will output a signal strength of one. But since there are four undead in the game, this will be stronger. This is a signal strength of four. This is a signal strength of one, so it won't output. Same for two and three. Um, if, if three undead have been captured, so there's one still free, this will output a signal strength of three. This will be four, so it won't output. However, when all the undead have been captured, this will output a signal strength of four, it's the same as this signal strength, so it will output, but only when all undead are captured in the jail. That's all this is doing. It's just making sure that everyone who's on the undead team is in the kill box. And that's how it outputs. So when the amount of people in the kill box is the same as the amount in the game, it'll output. It'll say, all undead have been contained, another success for the Ghostbusters. This is the Ghostbusters winning. And so those are the three outputs of how the game actually ends. And then they all come to these command blocks over here. And what this does is it just it sets everyone's spawn point back to the original building. Um, it teleports everyone to a minor, uh, to a negative Y coordinate. So they'll be teleported below the map, so they'll be killed off pretty quickly. Um, keep inventory false is um, the game rule changes so that when they die they lose all their stuff. Um, this removes the that in-game objective that I'll, that I'll talk about later on. Um, forget about that again for now. But just know that at the, when the game ends, it removes the in-game objective. And then these three below, um, it removes the cops team, the Ghostbusters. It removes the undead team. And it removes the souls objective. Um, 
It should remove the time objective as well, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, there we go. Next, delay. Scoreboard objectives remove time. It flips this RS null latch back to this side again. Um, and that's that's all the redstone for the actual game. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you that in a second, but I'll go through the in-game objective first, which you've seen twice now. Basically, the in-game objective appears at the start of the game and gets deleted at the end of the game. What it's for is it gives me a variable to use that will output when the game when a game is in progress and will not output when a game isn't in progress, which actually turns out to be pretty useful. The first use of it is here. Uh, this is a hopper clock, so this is constantly outputting. And this is testing for a score of in-game of zero. Now, this may not seem very helpful, but notice that this is an upper bound, so anything less than zero, it will also output that. Basically, this will mean um, if there is no objective called in-game, it won't output, of course, at the moment. It's not outputting anything because there's no objective called in-game. However, the moment it gets created, everyone starts out with a score of zero. So the moment it gets created, this will go, oh, there we go. There is an objective called in-game and this will output. So if I do, if I was to do scoreboard objectives add and then in-game and then dummy, it would output, see? And I don't have to do any other commands. I merely just have to create the objective, which is great. I don't have to create it and then set it to set it to a score of one or anything. So that's what that does. Um, so I'll get rid of that now. Um, give me a second. Scoreboard objectives remove in-game, and then it'll turn off again. And all that does then is this powers both of these pistons at the start, so that when the game's in progress, these are extended. So if someone was to join the server whilst the game was in progress, they wouldn't be able to stand on the pressure plates. So and potentially cause a second game to start whilst the first one's in progress, which would mess up the redstone, which wouldn't be very good. So that's what that does, that just prevents it. That has a sec the in-game objective has a second use, a little bit more subtle, um, but we'll come to that when we go through this. Um, so of course when the game starts, the redstone will come through here. This is the armory where um, the cops stand, well, cops get all their stuff. Uh, what it does is it, it, this is mirrored onto the other side, so this is exactly the same as this side, so I'm not going to bother showing all this here, because it's exactly the same as this side. What this does is, this is a, these are a load of um, dispensers that have all the items that the cops um, get. So when, I, when this all gets powered, it dispenses all of these dispensers, it goes into a load of hoppers here, and then those hoppers all feed into this um, chest here. You know, you can get the chests out. As you can see, they're right there. You can you may notice another hopper there. We'll get back to that in a second. But basically, when that redstone fires, when that redstone triggers, it'll fire all these dispensers. They'll all shoot into these hoppers. Those hoppers will fill up your chest to give you all your stuff. Um, over around here is you have your consumables, um, which are the... Um, I had full inventory, but whatever. What that was is that was your ender pearls and your splash potions of slowness or damage. I can't remember what it was, but anyway, the reason they're different is that those can be given to you via commands, where these are all custom items, so they have to be in dispensers. To be honest, looking back at it, this room was completely pointless. I could have you, I could have um, them stand in a little two by one cell, get given all your items, and then get put into the map. So you wouldn't even have to do all this; it would all be automated. But I kind of like the novelty of it, so we'll, I'll leave it like that. Um, and then over here, what it does is, as you saw when I pressed that, um, when I stood on the pressure plate, the piston pushed out and stayed out, so you couldn't get any more. Um, the bit you stood on was down here. This was the pre this is the um, pressure plate here. So this gives you your uh, potions, and that one gives you your ender pearls. Um, so and then it also powers up here. Um, but this here is an RS null latch, so it flips this RS null latch to keep the piston out, and it gets reset from this other command block here. And what that command block is is the one that teleports you into the map. So you have to stand on that to get out. So you can you can only use this once, pretty much. And then that that command block there is the teleport one. So that's all that is. Um, and then it's mirrored on the other side. Now that extra um, hopper you saw below is this one, and it's also what uses the in-game um, objective. So when the in when it when you are in game, this outputs. It turns this torch off, which turns this torch on, which locks this hopper, 
And actually, the hopper in the bottom of the chest is that one there. But it also powers that block, which locks this hopper, which means nothing will flow out of it. Um, but it is at the moment, of course, because that's off. In game, when it is in game, that will freeze, and it won't. It won't do that. What it also means is it won't suck items out of this chest. Um, so, of course, that'd be pretty rubbish. If you started the game and the chest full of items emptied itself, it wouldn't be very useful. So, in game, the chest will not do that. Um, what this does is when you're not in game, or as now, that chest will um, lose its stuff and go into this hopper. Basically, um, when if say like um, in one of the games, um, someone decides to not pick everything up, or forgets to, or leaves an item by accident. The next game, then the person could come along and pretty much have twice the amount of items potentially, which would it wouldn't be very useful. But I'd rather not have that there. I'd rather it just be a nice, clean, simple layout take everything out of the chest sort of thing. So when the game ends, of course the object the in-game objective turns off and it'll allow it'll let these repeat it'll let these hoppers, sorry, um take stuff out of the box. So in between games it'll clear it'll empty the chest out completely so that there are no extra items in it for the next round. So that's the way the in-game objective works there. So it's a pretty subtle little way of doing it. Um but I'm I'm pretty pleased with that. And that's also the in-game objective is also the reason why initially there was going to be an RS null latch at the beginning as well, so that even if the so that um, the RS null latch wouldn't that wouldn't be there either. The RS null latch would power these two um, pistons, so that that would stop people from getting in. Um, and also at the end of the game, this would come back and would power that RS null latch the other way to drop the pistons. Instead, I used the in-game objective so that there's no extra redstone. It's all sort of done wirelessly um, and it's done there and there because also the RS null latch would also have to come over here and freeze the hoppers and then unfreeze them at the end of the game. It's just easier to do with objectives, it's just a nice way of doing it. So that's all the object that's all the redstone in the map pretty much except for this, which is the um the undead class selection. And they're all the same and they're all pretty similar. So I only need to go through one. And we'll go through the tanks because this has um an effect that a lot of people have actually asked for and I'll show how it's done. So the pressure plate is on top of this block. This first clears the inventory, so if you're reselecting your class, as is up there, that's then that's an exact copy of this, so I've just copied it down and you know clear. So there's a clear command to empty your inventory, even though for this one you should always be empty anyway. It's just if you're in the if you're messing around in the intro then you know that does that anyway. This teleports you over here into this box. It also activates an RS null latch because there's a door here. So when you press on this, um, the door will close and it will stay closed until you leave, which is good because we were having problems where someone was running in. The door would open, someone would run in again, but they'd both get teleported into here and then they'd get stuck. Or the second person would get stuck. So that fixes that. So that teleports them into here. This says um, the closest person is now a tank, which is good because that was the start of the map. And then here, it gives you a potion effect. It's, that's slowness for a million seconds, so you have it pretty much forever. Um, this gives you your sword, which is your iron sword, even though they, I believe they have an enchanted sword. Oh, they've got them breaking, yeah. So that's not, not actually needed anymore. 267 is a sword. Yeah, it is, yeah. This um, is your... Um, what effect is that? Regeneration. So that gives you regeneration level 1 for a million seconds, just so you slowly regen health over time because you're a tank. Now this one, 21 is health boost. And for every level of health boost you get, you get an extra 2 hearts on your action bar. And I've given you, it's not level 19, it's level 20, it's just level 1 you don't specify a number. Well, level 1 is 0 pretty much. So this is level 20, so that gives you an extra 40 hearts. Uh, which is four, which is four bars of health. So if I just go into game mode zero and do that effect on me, um, I believe it was twenty-one. I'm just going to double check again. Yep, twenty-one. Um, I'll give it myself a ten seconds, and then level nineteen. I get an extra four heart, four bars of health, and then the regeneration effect is what puts that back up. And of course, three, two, one, and then it'll disappear again. And then there, there goes the extra hearts. So that's how you do more hearts. It's a potion effect twenty-one, and as far as I know. You can't make a potion for it in vanilla. It's just there. It's just for map makers, which is pretty cool. And then this is the final command block. It teleports you to the start, which is just outside the supermarket over there. 
and every single class is exactly the same except you get given different stuff in the chests chests and the dispensers and the command blocks so that's how class selection works and then up here it's exactly the same except when you get released from the um, the prison you get put into this one as opposed to that one the reason for that is that the only thing that's different between these is the where you get teleported to and which is just there on top of that iron block this bit of redstone here is just tracking it's just the way that um, the redstone works to tick down when you stand on the capture points and then the lights are above this here and it'll tick down signal strength until it releases someone this is not my design this is Seth Bling's um, so there is a video on his channel for that I'm not sure what it's called I think it's a snapshot review of 1.5 but other than that that's everything I think over there is just where you spawn that teleports you over to there just the radius I always have that at the start of a map just because it's safer and that is all the redstone it's been a 35 minute video so it's been a long video um, and there's been a lot of redstone to explain but hopefully this shows you and gives you an understanding of how the map actually works um, it's actually quite simple for the amount of the, for the amount of redstone that it seems to have it's just with objectives and stuff and scoreboards uh, it's just been great you can just do all sorts with maps now and 1.7 is coming around with lots of other stuff to add into the scoreboard which is fantastic but other than that um, i hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next video